Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thanks for joining us for our Thursday weather update recorded on May the 16th. High pressure parked out here towards Australia. By the way, they've got an enormous area of high pressure, larger than Australia, and it's going to dominate Aussie for at least another week, which means we're on the edges of it. And it means our weather pattern remains kind of westerly driven. Not all the time, though. And it's autumn-like where we've got variable weather every day or two it's changing around a bit so we're on the autumn side of things in Australia it's colder it's drier than it's been and their weather pattern the reason why I talk about it is because it comes our way look at the airflow at the moment though certainly windy going in towards Wellington windy around Auckland and really many coastal areas Taranaki as well don't talk about Taranaki enough and I should do sorry for those who, who live there uh, windy weather blowing off the Tasman Sea for you with those uh, showers fairly fast moving as well. Mild and dry for many parts of the eastern side once those uh, initial showers clear away. There will be a few just passing over. This is how we look at the moment, or at least as we go in towards midnight tonight. You can see the southwesterly over Tasmania and for New Zealand that curves around as more of a westerly wind for the lower part of the South Island, which means tonight not quite as cold as it has been for those in Southland. Elsewhere, not much going on, and here's the next 48 hours as we go through Friday and Saturday. Cold front comes in, falls apart as it heads up the country. So it drives in a few showers both sides of the island as that comes in, and high pressure parked south of Australia, as I said, for at least another week, giving the southeastern corner of Australia plenty of cold changes. I mention that because, as I say, their weather comes into our uh, side of the world. So it's always interesting to see what is going on in this corner of Australia, in particular, Victoria, Tasmania. Let's have a look at rainfall now. Not a lot coming, but we do have those showers uh, sneaking in. And so most of those are down here around the lower South Island. Fairly dry in the north. Um, it's possibly a little bit wetter than it shows. It's kind of hard for computer modeling to, to predict showers. It can sort of show you a general area that's got showers, but you know, a shower can form just outside that and suddenly it changes a wee bit. So I would generally say the blue shading probably lines up along a number of western areas, but don't expect a huge amount of wet weather, most of it down in Fjordland. So here's how Friday shapes up. The wintry change comes into Tasmania. We're on the warmer side of it with the west to northwesterly winds. And this is high pressure. It doesn't have an H in it, but it is. It's high pressure. It's connected to the main driver over here. That is the main high pressure zone, as you're going to notice. So on Saturday, that southerly, and I'm sorry I'm talking about Aussie. There's an Aussie video out today, but I'm mentioning it because it does have relevance to us. The big southerly punches into Sydney. There's a small area of low pressure forming between the weak high that's over the North Island, sort of separating it now from the main driver over there. And that high pressure zone keeps things mostly dry, but a very light southeasterly or easterly breeze puts a few showers into places like maybe uh, Bay of Plenty, maybe because it's sort of a bit borderline, and further up around Coromandel Peninsula and Great Barrier Island, and obviously rain falling here in Fiordland, spilling over again into Southland and some parts of Otago. Not a huge amount, and by Sunday, just a couple of showers left over. The high pressure zone trying to find itself a new home, it's kind of parked itself here, just off the uh, eastern side of the South Island, and we've got this trough. It's like a pothole in the sky or a low that's trying to form, and that is it here. There's another one on the other side. Remember the map we showed you for Monday the other day with Blinky the three-eyed fish, three lows all stacked up? Well now, and I said to you at the time, looks a bit weird, don't lock it in. This is how we're looking now. It's, it's taken two of the lows on this side from that Monday map and put it into one bigger, stronger low. And then over here, there are two low pressure zones. So it was right to pick three lows, it just didn't have them in the right order uh, lined up like that. So we've got two out here, not very big, and there's this massive block of high pressure just off the screen. And you can see it properly here on Tuesday. It is larger than Australia. The whole thing goes all the way down towards Antarctica and goes all the way up to Darwin and the far north of Queensland and stretches out to not only the lower South Island, but all the way out to the Chatham Islands. So this is an enormous high pressure zone. Once again, it's the second one we've seen in just a few weeks, and it is unfortunately keeping things very dry for those who need rain in Australia. But this is our New Zealand video. We're focused on what is happening here. A little bit of wet weather in the mix, but not a huge amount. It's worth keeping an eye on though, because it might kind of stall. And while not a huge amount of rain, you might end up with kind of cloudy, patchy sort of rain or, or drizzle or showers stuck in that zone for a couple of days. So we'll keep an eye on that one. The best way to do that, use our new app. 
it, it crunches the weather models that we show you here. These get updated twice a day from America and Europe and wherever else. But our, our data maps the entire globe every one hour. And so it's sort of like, a, it's like going to Google Earth, how you know, they map the planet. Sometimes you're looking at sort of three or four years old, the image. The, the data that we have in our app and on our websites updates every single hour around the entire planet. It is really quite something. And so it picks up on all the small changes that are happening while we only update you once a day here in our videos. So that's the big picture here. Get the uh, more detail using our forecasts. That is all from me. I'll see you again tomorrow Friday with our rain watch update, taking a look at rain and the potential for it in the places that need it the most. So we will see you then. Otherwise, I'll see you later today in our Australia-only forecast, which is also out on Thursdays. Yeah.